Hello everyone at Grinder School. This is Characters here and this afternoon I am making the final part part three of the three part series of moving from twenty five to hundred NL. Today we have ascended to the crazy heights of the one hundreds where we will be encountering a good few more regs, most of them still fairly bad. But the main differences from what you've seen in previous videos are just probably going to be a lot more pre-flop aggression. With Ace King here, we've got a really standard three bet against this guy. I play with him a lot. He's like multi-tabling sort of bot reg, standard sort of guy. Um, I just make it 850 here as my standard sizing. I think it's fine. Um, he doesn't call that many three bets. So when he does, we give him a range of sort of like maybe like eights or nines through to. The hands he doesn't four bet, which would be like jacks or queens. He four bets thirteen percent, so like standard sort of amount, and some broadways like king queen suited, ace queen suited, stuff like that. I'm definitely going to be a continuation betting this flop. I think eleven is a fine size. It enables me to get three streets of value like comfortably, and there's no awkward bet sizing on any street. Um, his fold to c bet's quite high in general, so from that I infer that he probably isn't going to be. Um floating me very much so I think the best line here is just to not let him check back any streets and to basically just go for three streets of value so if I bet 26 here there'll be like plenty in the pot I'm gonna make it 25.50 plenty in the pot for me to just go ahead and shove the river um, and if he shoves here we're just gonna be calling because it just there's so few uh, value -y hands he can have we're gonna shove the river when he calls this quickly I think his most likely hand is like king queen or king jack or something like that um, maybe like queens or jacks or something. Um, let's time down a little bit and shove the river for value. It's really standard here. Because we just have the best hand like all the time. And when he's tanking, um, that's usually quite a good sign that we almost certainly do have the best hand. So we three bet this guy here. Um, I'm going to check this flop to him. I can't get any better hands to fold unless I start barreling. And even then, a lot of his hands are going to be like um, stuff like Ace X anyway. So I'd much rather just check call or check fold the flop. Um, already we're into some three bet parts. This is good um, for the 100 NL video. This is what we want. Um, so in this spot, like my original plan is to check call the flop. The only concern I have is here, like his. He folds to so many three bets. His range here is actually quite strong. Um, I think he'll be checking back like jacks and stuff like that. And then the hands he's betting here, I think a lot of them actually are like ace queen, ace jack and stuff. And I also feel like because he bets the turn so much, if I call here, I'm going to have to face a bet on the turn. So I'm actually just going to check fold this flop. Um, I don't feel like my pair is doing well enough versus his range there because of how much he folds pre-flop and how much he will be folding there in general. Pre-flop. So... You know, it's a little bit nitty, but I think it's fine. Um, so this guy opens oh, not very wide on the cutoff, actually. Um, I thought was, if his range was wider than that, I would flat there and just... I mean, I could 3-bit, but um, I've already been quite active so far on that table, and I don't want to get 4-bit or induce break speed when I've got King Jack. I'd rather just... Yeah, it wouldn't be bad to 3-bit, I don't think, but... I just elected the fold there. I think it's close. Versus this guy, he does open really wide on the, well, fairly wide in the cutoff. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and three bet here. And um, this guy squeezes. If he didn't squeeze, I'd be okay flat in there. But I'd prefer if my hand was suited to actually flat. I'm gonna fold to this three bet on table one because I don't know anything about this guy yet. I played like one hand with him before where, um, what happened? It was like I need to finish this note first. It was like king nine eight and I check raised. And he he peeled the flop when I checked raised my set and then he folded a flush card turn, which makes me think he's mo most likely hand to take that sort of a line would be top pair. So that's what I imagine he'd have. I'm going to 3-bet this fish for value and be okay getting in here, not thrilled, but I think he'll just be calling so much that it's going to be a great spot just to 3-bet just to for value. Um, and on table 3, I'm going to just continuation bet this flop. Standard. So, finish off that. And fold to barrel on flush card turn. 
happens all the time. I hate stars. It just takes away the, the fucking box where you're where you're typing into. It really tilts me. Like if I'm running bad, that's one of the worst things about playing on stars. It's one of the only bad things because the software is actually really good, um, for the most part. Okay, so we ISO out position here. We get called cold called by by this dude, or did he? Oh, he must have must have limped. Um, okay, so this flop, like, I can check call, but I just feel like he might not even stab low pairs. Um, it's going to be so difficult out of position to know what the hell I'm doing on the turn. I'd rather just, even though I don't fold out any better hands here, I don't get value from any worse, I'd rather just bet this flop with my whole range pretty much, just to get him to fold out all this crap. I think it's just such a better way to play the hand and start check calling and playing guessing games out of position against a fairly aggressive player. If a hammer's a bit stronger, like maybe a good jack, um, or even like weak ace x, check calling becomes better in that spot where you're still not getting a whole lot of value because you're just you can call more streets more comfortably. But with tens there, I'd rather just see bet, um, for those reasons. Queen two, like there's a couple of three bets here. I'm actually gonna fold this on the button. I'd open that almost all the time, but there's two guys here just pounding on me, and that's good. This is what I want for the video. I've got a table full of a lot of three bears here. These tables are all quite bad. Like I was saying in the last one, I would get off most of these tables right now. Um, this one's good because the sky looks really bad, but I would get off these tables most of the time if this was a normal session. But I want to get into some sort, of some battling three, three bet and four bet spots pre-flop and stuff just to show you what more pre-flop aggression is like as you move up, basically. So the theme of this video is going to be talking about in downtime. I'm going to be talking about what kind of hands um, we want to be like defending against three bets with, and how do we adjust to people who start to three bet us more. Now with the fours here, this goes back to what I was saying in my previous video. Calling here is terrible. You got a decent reg. Who I know this guy's decent. He opens on the button, and um, his range is on the cutoff. His range is super wide, so we can't call from pyros. We'll be check folding a ton, not flopping much equity post flop. We can three bet here, but because I would only three bet this hand if I felt I could ship over a four bet profitably. This guy hasn't four bet yet. I don't even know if he likes the four bet bluff at all. So I'm just gonna fold. If we had a four bet three bet dynamic, I would three bet and then shove. To combat four betting, but I don't even know if he does that, so it would be spewed to just three bet and then infer that we can do that. And we don't want to be getting our three bets flatted and stuff out of position when we've got fours. It's not a good hand to three bet bluff with, unless you think you're going to face a lot of weak four bets that you can shove over. Um, okay, I'm going to squeeze with the aces here. Um, I don't think I need to make it too big. I think 13 is okay. Um, could even make it a bit smaller. This guy's like half stacked, don't know much about him. He, I know he donked one flop before, which I folded too, so I think he's probably quite bad. But um, unfortunately, he folds. And we get min, we get min three bet. Well, close to min three bet by this guy. I played a bit with him before. I don't know what the min three bet means. He's got taggy stats. Um, and he he looks quite active. So I'm gonna go ahead and four bet here and then get it in. Um, flatting is is not terrible because it would leave a lot of dominated hands in his range and stuff like that. But I just feel like... It's strange because I just don't know what this means. It could be he only does this with like strong hands, or it could be this is just like standard sort of sizing. But I can... He might think I'm full of shit. I look quite aggro. I can maybe induce some shoves with worse hands even here by going ahead and... Um, four betting. I'm going to go ahead and just make it uh, 20. I think it always looks a little bit bluffier when you stick something like that on the end. Not always, but versus a lot of rigs. Default. So we want to take a note of that. Um, A3 bets, 3 to 7 out of position, and fold to 3x, 4 bet. And the reason I made my 4 bet a bit, bit bigger there is because I don't want him to peel it. I'm not thrilled about him peeling my. I mean, it's okay. It's quite. It's not terrible. But I would rather just pick up the pot a lot of the time pre flop. I only have Ace King. It's not like. It's not like I'm like crushing a lot of stuff. I'm crushing some things, um, like Ace Queen and Dominated Hands. I'm beating him ahead of those. But I don't feel like I want to induce him to like flat if I make it really small there. Because some guys will 3 bet less so that they can like flat 4 bets and stuff like that against people who 4 bet bluff. So just make it a bit bigger just to stop his odds and make it. A, even more of a mistake if he does want to flat there. It's not so much I don't want him to flat, it's just I want it to be a bigger mistake if he does elect to flat my 4 bet out of position. So that's why I make it sort of 3x there, because his 3 bet size was so small. 
I combat that by making my 4 bit size a little bit bigger just to make it the right sort of and also to give him a decent price on his shove to widen his shoving range um, because if I make it really small he's less inclined I think to shove like semi bluffing hands like ace queen or some sort of hand that he doesn't know what to do with I think he's more likely just to flat that I'd love him to, to start shoving over worse aces and kings there every now and then so I think it's a good size for that reason as well so anyway what's our general approach then to to facing to dealing with three bets as we move up through 50 and 100 NL well we want to be we want to have a range of hands we defend with, a range of hands we four bet and a range of hands we fold it's the same as what goes back to goes back to what I was saying about blind defense there's like we've got like um, three different parts of our range when we face a three bet so generally I, I would I would definitely advise that you have a, a pretty tight um, range continuing to a 3-bet from someone you don't know anything about. Yeah, they may be a reg and they may be 3-bet in light, but you're going to get yourself into a world of trouble if you start flatting 3-bets with like ace-jack cutoff versus big blind where you don't know anything about the guy, because A, his range might not be that wide, that you might not be actually doing that well versus it, and it might be a big mistake to call pre-flop, and B, you're not going to, you're going to be readless post-flop if you don't know how aggressive someone is and how often they like to see bet how often they like to barrel if they check whether that means they're giving up doesn't mean they're check raising what does it mean like if we don't know anything about them we're just going to get into a lot of bad spots post-flop so a general approach at these limits is just going to be to fold to plenty of this is my style but i think it is certainly a style that works well unfortunately this table is breaking up here i'm going to try i can try to play a bit of heads up i just don't want to end up killing myself with action and end up getting swamped when I'm doing a video so I'm going to see if this table fills up but if not I'm probably going to leave and try and find another one for you guys um, I'm going to fold here, I don't know anything about this guy to call the 4-bet I'm going to defend the king-queen here it's not strong enough for me to get in but he's 3-betting really wide so far so I feel like it's going to do well against like a lot of hands um, and it's, it's going to dominate and just do really well against a load of the hands he's going to be 3-betting um, maybe it's 12 on this board um, I think f his turn barrel percentage is 50% so far, it's not like a huge sample so we can't infer too much from that. Um, I think this is close between floating and folding. Because I don't know that much about him, um, I don't really know how often he's going to barrel the turn. He will barrel like kings and queens which is definitely good for us. But to be honest I think I'm just going to fold here for now and just be a bit more straightforward. Another thing I don't want to do is start advocating getting really sort of spewy and crazy in 3-bit pots when we don't know much about the guy. Um, he's obviously afraid of the carrot man, it's understandable. Um, I wouldn't fault him for that, so he's left. So I'm going to close this table and I will try and find another table quite quickly without too much disruption. I'm going to 3-bit this guy. He doesn't know anything about me yet. I want to see how he's reacting. I have position on him. I want to see how he's playing so that if he does have any exploitable tendencies I can get to exploiting them right away I can just get to like 3 betting him if he's folding too much um, King 9 is a decent hand, it's going to play okay, it's going to fold out hands that dominate us the King's a blocker, um, it's a good choice of hand to incorporate as part of our light 3 betting range here for sure so our general approach versus 3 bets will be quite tight this looks like a good table um, so what hands might we want to flat to 3 bets once we've got a bit of an idea that guy maybe is 3 betting 8 or 9% from the blinds or a bit more than that. Um, well, there's hands that that will dominate him. It goes back to the same thing about the blind defence. There's hands that will dominate him, um, like the king-queen that you saw me flat to 3 bet just there. And I think that's that's a relatively good hand to flat. Um, even like like ace-queen, ace-jack, because if he's 3-betting kind of polarised, he might be 3-betting like queen x suited, jack x suited, and we'll just have those hands in really bad shape. So hands that are just playing super well versus the guy's light 3-betting range, we want to flat hands that will that will play well versus that. Um, and then there's, there's the other sort of hands we might want to flat, maybe like jack-10 to 9 suited, 8, 9 suited at a push. Hands that just flop loads of equity and allow us to, if he's got a light range, hands that will give us the equity that we need in order to attack that light range profitably. So if a guy is like three betting really wide from the from the blinds and we defend with 10-9 suited, a lot of his C bets will be with air because his range is wide and he can't hit that many flops. 
So we want a, a hand that can give us semi-bluffing out, so that when we do bluff raise and float and stuff, we have equity and it will just increase the EV of our play so much. We don't want to like float like ace eight offsuit because a guy is three bet and light. We don't want to flat three bet with that because it can't flop any any semi-bluffing hands or equity post flop really in order to help us play back at someone. So if we want to choose a portion of our range to attack a light three bet in range, we should choose a portion that flops equity and makes it more plus EV for us to do that. Okay, so that's the sort of hands we might want to flat versus um, a light three better. Eight nine here, I'm not going to squeeze because this guy doesn't fold very much to three bets. He four bets a lot, um, and also we've got got a good price here, a multi way pot, and we've got relative position on the small blind. I think it's just a fine spot. Um, I could lead here, but I don't get any better hands to fold. The trouble is, this guy will see bet like all the time here, and he will take it down if he's hit this this flop. So I can just bet here as a sort of bet to try to take the pot down with some outs if called, as in I can make trips in two pair if he does call with a king or a jack. So that's one option. The other option is to check fold this board. Uh, duh, 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 what am I going to go with? This guy's range I expect to be a lot of low pairs that won't be able to call on this flop very often. And this guy's under the gun range, 18%. Yeah, he'll miss this board enough because he'll be opening a lot of pairs. I'm going to go ahead and... I don't know how this guy will react though if he thinks I'm full of shit then that kind of sucks but yeah I'm going to go ahead he's got this guy to worry about after him so I don't think he can get too crazy with me here so I think I get two folds here like a decent amount of the time although check folding would be alright as well um, ace jack it's like a decent spot to squeeze like if I don't think that I can call and be doing all that well versus cutoffs range, although I probably can be. Oh, it's only 13%. He folds to 67%. I've just been so crazy on this table, though. I don't know how much, how many folds I'm going to get if I squeeze here. And my hand is strong enough that it certainly plays okay versus a ranger, so I'm going to flat there, although I think it's close. And if um, cutoff C-bets here, another guy folds. I was actually thinking of check raising with a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. Because a lot of his hands will be air, and we'll get a lot of folds. Okay, now we're going to bet to try and fold out like lowish medium pairs. I don't think he ever has a king when he checks this flop, and he's giving up a lot of the time because even some queens he'll bet to protect them. When the flops draw you, like ace queen and good queens, he'll probably be betting there as well. Um. If he continues on that turn after I lead it, I'm probably going to shut down the river and think that he's got a queen like a decent amount of the time. Um, because I just feel like with this guy to worry about after him, I don't know if he will be calling me with like pocket eights there on that turn when I lead three-way. I just don't know enough about him, so I don't think a river bluff is going to be that profitable when a decent amount of his combos may be queen x, because he will be opening quite a lot of queen x there from the cutoff. Okay, so we've talked about what kind of hands we might want to uh, continue, as in what hands we might want to flat to a 3-bet versus a light 3-bet or so. If we want to 4-bet, um, we obviously have a 4-bet value range, like aces, kings, queens, ace, king, hands that we can get in profitably versus them when they shove over a 4-bet and also make money by the times that they fold to us. So we're just making money, whatever they do, basically, with our 4-bet four, four value range. Often we can incorporate jacks into that, tens into that, ace, queen into that range, under aggressive dynamics where someone is shoving over four bets lightly or they're just four betting so much that when they fold we just make lots of money by shoving. Um, uh, I've already three bet this guy. I don't know if he's going to be a four bet or whether he's going to be... I don't like to three bet king queen here because I feel there's a reasonable chance I'll get four bet if this guy's a reg. Oh shit. I'll definitely don't fold. Um, but yeah, this is this is what happens when you make four tabling videos. And there's interesting spots you sometimes time out, so I'll try to avoid that. But let's talk about that hand in theory. I think flatting there is probably best. The reason I'm, I don't like flatting is because this guy squeezes so much. But because he squeezes so much, like, and he see bets all the time, I think flatting the squeeze is going to be good because he'll actually just barrel the shit out of like king and queen high boards that actually make our hand. So I think that's going to be fine. Um, so we defend blind versus blind here with uh, king 10. I'm probably going to float this flop if he bets, because I have the, actually have the best hand quite a lot of the time, and he hasn't been betting that many turns, and he will probably bet cards that make our hand. So I think this is quite a standard float here. 
I think the King's a good card for us because it's one he's gonna he's gonna barrel because it hits his range more than it hits ours in his eyes. But unfortunately for him we actually have a king in this spot. I'm just gonna time down a little bit, call again, and then we're definitely calling River Bets here because he's quite aggressive and he doesn't have that many value hands on this board. And we're basically at the top of our range here. All our range, what our range looks like is um medium pairs and stuff like that. When he checks, like I feel like he bets all better hands for value here. So if I want to go ahead and I'm just trying to figure out if he bets a turn with any hands that he can call now with. I don't think so. I mean it would be really silly of him. I guess he could have a really weak king. Oh yeah, this is quite thin. I think. I just hate it when regs own me in this spot by being dumb and check calling like King Queen. That really annoys me. I think there are more worse hands in his range than better hands, just given the way he's played that hand. Um, and I feel like it'll be hardly ever that he actually bluff raises me on that river. I just don't think he's ever going to just check raise that river as a bluff. It's just too weird in regs at 100 and I'll just don't do that. Okay, let's think about this guy's range. So he bets the flop. We call, he checks the turn. We check back, he bets the river. Most regs don't do this as a bluff because they expect to be looked up in this river all the time. Nothing's changed on the board. So I actually think he has Jack X here more than anything. Unless I know him to be bad. If I know he's bad, then I'm going to snap call this. I'm going to flat Ace King here because this guy folds to so many 3 bets. When he opens under the gun, he's not going to continue wide enough to make it that profitable. So if you can start folding in these sort of spots versus regs, um, I think you'll you'll make money because... They just their bluff frequency usually, not always, but usually is going to be very low on that river, because it looks like I'm never folding. They don't entrust other regs to fold unless they know they're decent. It's a line that you. It's a, it's a leveling game. It's a line that you take against against good regs if you think you can make them fold. But I don't think he thinks I'm good. I just look kind of crazy so far, um, based on the hands he'll have on me. So I don't like it. I don't like calling there unless I have a read that he's trying to level me or he's dumb enough to actually do it as a bluff and think it's a good bluff. So that's why I folded there, hopefully that's clear enough, I just think his bluffing frequency is really low. I feel like I'd be more likely to call turn than I would call river after turn checks through because it's, he has more air in his range when he barrels the turn than he does when he checks the turn and then barrels the river. So I mean, a lot of these guys, they just won't assume that you can fold like nines there on mid medium pairs when nothing changes on that river. So definitely I don't think we have very much equity. His range is mostly jacks, random rivered straights and sets. And that's the gist of it with some air, but probably not enough for us to do anything. Your standard 4x ISO here. Normally make it a bit bigger, but I've got Kvarnik 3 bet here, so I want to have a bit of room to 4 bet bluff and stuff. If he actually 3 bets me, I don't want to make it so big that I'm, that I'm forcing myself into a spot where... I have to fold but pretty much my whole range. So he calls the flop and we a really good turn card. Um go ahead and bet quite small here because it sets up a easy half pot river shove and I actually would like to induce him to ship over with like some random pair of fives or something like that. Uh River kind of sucks because now any six has a straight and he definitely has plenty of sixes in his range. Also means if he has two pair, he's probably going to check call. Um, I don't think I can get called by, maybe I can get called by like 7x or something, but I think there's a lot of strong hands in his range now as well. So I think it might be a bit thin to shove here because it looks like I'm never bluffing as well for this price. So I'm just going to check back. He has a straight. So he's just a total station. Limp calls 6-2 under the gun. I mean, it's just like the worst thing I've ever seen. It's just terrible. And station down with gutter check. With gut shot and check made straight down river. So basically just the, the behaviour of a complete tard. Great guy to play with. I'm actually going to give him the the character's whale tag that I put on all the whales I play with and that just means they're just completely terrible 
So if I ever open up a guy's note box and I see that, I know he's really bad. Because there's a lot of fish and I, I give them the pink tag, but I don't give them the whale tag. But when someone has a whale tag, it means they're fucking terrible, like this guy is. <clears throat> I apologise if I'm swearing a bit. I tend to do that when I play poker and at many other points throughout my life. So I will try not to, but please note that I do not mean it. So don't get offended. <laughs> um... So four betting bluff hands. Hands will be four bet bluff. Hands with blockers. This is important. If we want to start playing back at a light three better, we want to be doing it with hands that have blockers to his range. As in they have blockers to his five bet getting it in range, basically. I'm gonna defend the King Jack here. Um it's suited, it's gonna dominate a lot of his range. I could three bet as a bluff but he doesn't hasn't folded so far I don't know it's probably a bit light to 3 bet for value and if he 4 bets have to fold that really sucks and wastes the hand <clears throat> out of position floats definitely an option here I don't know how much he's likely to barrel me but a lot of guys will shut down on these boards um, so I'm just going to float here I'll fold the turn if he bets but there's a lot of turns that I can actually make like and when I bet this river, I just have a6 so often, and he bets a6 in the turn so often. And um, that's really terrible that he didn't bet the turn there. Um, but we'll take a note of that. Um, that's just really, really bad because the turn is just so, so much value. And he's just auto checked it because the flush card came. He's just obviously not thinking clearly about what's going on. I'm going to see bet here for value against this guy. There'll be tons of shit, as we've seen, that he's peeling with. And I'll probably bet two streets and then bluff catch the river or something like that versus him. This also means that, I'm going to leave that in caps, I didn't mean that, but it's important. <laughs> it also means that if he starts betting the turn, we can put more air in his range because he's like checking back his value range, like prime hands in his value range, like ace-queen on that board. On that board, he should be betting the turn with ace-queen because I have loads of ace-x that isn't folding and he can get three streets from it. And I don't have a flush that much because I don't have that many suited heart hands in my range and I raise them on the flop a good amount of time. Therefore, easy turn bet. So when he doesn't bet the turn, I can infer that his most likely range is going to be stuff like, well, stuff that's giving up, maybe even low pairs. So when I bet the river, I don't expect it to be called that lightly and I expect it to be a profitable river bluff for sure. King high can be good sometimes, but I think we can fold out better hands, like better king highs and like smallish pairs and stuff. So I just feel like he doesn't have much of a check calling range usually. That's why I like to do that. I could have made my 3-bet bigger here because we're a bit deep. I actually wish I'd made it about 10.50 or something. It's probably a bit better to get more money in the pot. And um, that's the first 3-bet he's folded to anyway. I stacked him just before this video started uh, when he had ace-king and I had kings and we got it in pre. It was fairly standard. So I took a note of his 4-bet sizing um, with that because you want to know. Just in case someone has leaks, sometimes people will 4-bet bigger for value than they will for a bluff. And if you can pick up on that, you're just making so much money because they don't know that you know that. So definitely know all these little things so that you can just look back on them and compare them to, to the present actions and stuff as you play more and more against these regs. So blockers are really important. I'm sorry, I keep getting distracted. Four tables is quite a lot of tables to be playing. Um, but, but blockers are important when you're four betting because they just take away so many of the not hands that people will five bet shove. I mean, if you have an ace in your hand, he no longer has like 16 combos of ace-king, he only has 12, for example. Um, he no longer has 6 combos of aces, he only has 3. So it just it's almost halving the combos of that hand. Not quite halving, but it's really cutting into the amount of value hands he can have, just by you having that one card. So if you're going to have a 4-bit range, and you're not going to be doing it all the time, which you're not, just try and, try and use hands that are, that are going to block his nut combos. We're going to 3-bet this guy, he folded to one of my 3-bets before, he's opening quite wide for middle position and stuff so far. I've got a blocker, I've got a suited king, I've got an overcard to pairs he might flat with, I'm suited, I've got position. Um, it's a good spot to 3-bet bluff, especially when it looks like he's probably going to be folding. And I'm probably going to pound on this guy until he shows me that he's not going to be folding to 3-bets. And if he keeps folding to my 3-bets, I'll keep pounding until he adjusts. 
Good choice of hand though, blockers help in 3 bets as well. Not as much, and the reason they're not as important is that the nut hands don't make up as big a chunk of a person's range when they 3 bet as they do when they 4 bet. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Just rewind it and listen to that sentence again if not. But um, basically, it still helps to have a blocker. It still cuts into their value hands that they're going to defend with, like ace queen, ace jack. It's just not quite as important as in a four bit pot where you're really taking away a significant chunk of their um, playing back range, the range that they're shoving over your four bit with. Um, so we open ace 10 here. I'm going to go ahead and fire at least two at this to start with because he doesn't have that many kings here. He mainly has like some pocket pairs and stuff like that. And this guy shoves over. Ah, it's one of these annoying spots. Like, we're getting not great odds. We opened under the gun. Ah, it's probably close. I could get up stove. Like, if he, he might even have, like, all pairs or something like that. In which case, we're doing alright. And it's probably a call, but he might not. I'm just gonna fold. I'm not getting that great price. If he had, like, $6 less there, I'd just snap call it. But I think it's probably a close fold. But still over range, I might be wrong on that. I think it's quite close, but I think it's probably a fold. It just depends with what frequency we can give him low pairs as to high pairs. If I had eights there, I would call. That's how close it is. Sevens, I don't know. Sixes, fold. Alright, this guy's passive, so don't expect him to bet here very often as a bluff like too much. Well, I don't know, he might stab at flops. But if I check raise, getting this draw in here kinda sucks. I feel I'd much rather just barrel here to take it down a lot of time and not have him like check back. Again, I'm gonna keep pounding on this guy. I've got a great hand to three bit bluff with. I've got a blocker. Plays really well, I've called. Can flop not flush draws. Um and he just keeps folding. So we're just gonna keep doing this. So a lot of these guys will adjust to you by waiting for a hand, and that's their adjustment. And if he's going to do that, then I'm I'm going to pound on him. I'm going to take his money. I'm going to exploit him. As uh, Micro with Micro would say, I'm going to make him my bitch. So I'm opening 2.5x on th this button because this guy 3-bets a lot. You'll see me open 3x on other buttons when people aren't 3-betting so much. I'm giving up King Jack on the flop here because the flop's all over the range. I don't expect to get that many folds. Oh, when they both when he checks again and this guy doesn't bet the flop, I I rep like pretty close to nothing. But I just don't. I just feel like Tillerman's going to lead like all the strong hands there on the on the turn. I just feel like I'm going to get two folds enough here for this to be profitable. I'm going to fold out ace high. So I think that's going to be fine. I'm going to limp fours here. We get raised by this guy. I don't know anything about him. I have no reason to assume he's full of shit here. He's got a guy attacked behind him, so it's just an easy fold. Um, I limp here because these guys are 3-betting the shit out of me. And they'll know that my range is really wide for ISO in there. So I choose to limp um, to counter that. One other reason that I choose to limp there is that this guy is a bit crazy and he may shove over me with like overcards. And I really don't fucking want that at all. So I think a limp is really good in that spot given these three and the dynamics that they're causing. Because my ISO is going to get picked on a ton, basically. I'm going to see about this here. I can barrel some cards um, because he has some pairs in his range and stuff. He doesn't have all that many aces. He mainly has like a lot of medium pairs and stuff. And on this card, like I definitely fold out like sevens through jacks, which is quite a lot of combos. So I don't need to. And if I don't think he has all that much ace x, this barrel is probably going to be profitable. And twos make me like probably the nuts as well, because I don't expect him to have that many flushes. When he calls a turn, though, he just has ace x all the time. I'm not going to expect him. I'm not going to give him credit to fold on the river. So I'm just going to give up in this spot. Oh, when he called the turn with 10s, that really surprised me. I think that's a really bad turn call by him. And my range is definitely too strong there for him to do that, but I would definitely need to note it. So that makes my turn barrel really bad if he's if he's going to call there. Uh, 
I mean, that's just the sort of hand I expect him to fold in a heartbeat there, and the fact that he hasn't makes my turn barrel bad, but I didn't know that. So, in the future, we can look at that note and just, you know, barrel lighter for value and not and not barrel turns as much after he calls a flop. He has a high fold to see bet. So, it just looks like he's defending on the flop a lot of hands he doesn't want to relinquish on the turn. So, if that's the case, we just need to tighten up our barrel range against him. It's no big deal. I had bet the river there if I knew he had those hands, but I just, as I say, it's we should be making the assumption that he just has ace x an overwhelming amount of the time, like ace jack, ace ten suited and stuff, when he calls the turn, because I expect him to be folding his pairs. So I, and he also has like some strong hands like flushes that he might not even raise there, letting me barrel the river or whatever. So I think the river's an easy give up, based on the assumptions we made. But now we've got information to the contrary, we can obviously adjust. I'm not going to 3-bet King Jack here just because we've got a really aggro image on this table. I'm just going to chill it out a little bit and take that into account. I've been 3-betting this guy a lot. He's probably going to get quite sick of it. My plan is to felt Ace King here, 140 deep. Um, I do expect him to call with a lot of worse hands as well. And I think I can get him to fold like loads of under pairs that he's maybe set me with on this on this flop, and um, stuff like that. When he calls, he de definitely has some queen x in his range, um, like jacks. I don't expect him to fold. Like, I don't know how often he's calling with like nines or eights and stuff pre-flop. I think like ten x and queen x aren't going anywhere at this point and make up quite a bit of his range. Um, so I think I'm just gonna have to give up here. I think it would be a bit spewy to start barreling. He bets pretty big. I'm almost tempted just to shove, but I don't think he'll fold Queen X at all. I don't know how light he's floating me here, or how many broadways with gutters or open enders he's decided to float call me with pre. So I'm just going to take the the more sensible approach and fold. Three's on the button. I don't want to call here because this guy's squeezing a lot, and this guy's a good t candidate to be squeezed. Um, I'm just going to fold it. I don't think it's good enough to set mine because his range isn't even that tight there and this guy will squeeze us quite a lot so it's not a good spot to actually be set mining in at all. Ace 9 is good enough for us to isolate versus the fish here. It's definitely a stronger hand in this situation than the 4s was and it can flop top pairs a lot which is what we want to have against this guy. So, and it also has a blocker which makes it less likely that this guy is going to be able to have a value hand and it means that we can 4-bet if he does 3-bet with more success and we can definitely consider that as part of our plan so it's definitely a better spot to ISO than what the 4s was and hopefully you see the distinction between those two spots 4s also plays a lot better multi-way in a limp pot than what Ace-9 offsuit does so so yeah so we open in the cutoff and we get 3-bet by the small blind who's 3-betting a lot this is going to be a standard 4-bet get it in because well flatting can sometimes be an option I think a hand as strong as Jack's in this situation should be part of your 4 bet again in range because a reg that 3 bets a lot and sees that you have reggae stats will be expecting you to be 4 bet bluffing and will be shoving over much lighter than like queens plus ace king you'll have a bunch of stuff to shove over and it's also not easy to play pre-flop because a lot of the time he's got kings that's unfortunate but hey because a lot of the time pre-flop um, if we just pick up the dead money with jacks that can actually be better than than having to call and then play a flop with over cards when you have jacks there'll be over cards on the flop quite a lot of the time so it, you actually do want to be avoiding situations where you're you don't know what to do versus a guy pre-flop when you can just have a very profitable four bet there where he'll be, he'll be shoving over it probably light enough and the times he folds you'll make money as well so that's just a standard sort of cooler cutoff versus a uh, small blind there I'm not going to change anything about the way I play that hand. One other thing I wanted to talk about in, the, in this video is just running bad and what it. and basically how to deal with running bad. I've been running bad all month, constantly. I've been getting my queens in against aces pre flop and all that sort of thing, constantly getting put in terrible spots this month, more than, probably more than ever in my poker career. And it's not been fun. Uh, but 
I wanted to talk to you about how to basically adjust to to downswings and to and to start countering all the horrible tilt that's seeping into your game and how to just like keep a level head and make sure you're still playing well. Basically you need to consider your bankroll. Right, this guy um finally decides to play back, but it's blind versus blind, and I've been three betting all the time. Actually it's gonna assume that he's quite light here when he four bets. Um I know he hasn't adjusted until now. I mean it's hard to say. He could be he could be one of these guys that just doesn't adjust. But he could all and, and waits for a hand, or he could be one of these guys that actually has just had enough and he's like, screw it. This is definitely one of the best hands to shove over with. Um, but because he's folded so much so far, it could well be that he's actually just the type that waits for a hand. But I mean, in the small blind, he opens like he's opened all small blinds so far. I'm really tempted to shove here. I just don't know if he likes the 4-bit bluff. He did it quite quickly. What am I talking about? We're not blind versus blind. No, in that case I'm going to fold. Because he's not given us a reason to think that he's actually going to be 4-betting yet, but now we've seen that we can sort of sort of start to consider the possibility that he is going to be 4-betting a bit lighter. And we can start to adjust just by um, maybe 3-betting like jacks or 10s and stuffing and shoving them over. Um, hands are going to play really well against his getting it in range, basically. And we'll just be 3-bet bluffing him a little bit less, but we'll still be 3-bet bluffing him. We'll just adjust our frequencies a little bit for now, and then we'll find out more and more about him as the session goes on, and as we play with him in future sessions. So when you're running bad, uh, you need to just consider things in the present. And by that I mean you just need to... You, you can't constantly be thinking, oh, last week I had 10 buy-ins more than what I had now. I'm running so bad. You know, life's so unfair, poker treats me like shit. You can't think like that. You have to just think, this is my bank rule as it is now, this is the way things are, and my objective is to play as well as I can so that I can win money and build my role back up to to something more respectable. Back to what it used to be. You, not back to what it used to be, but just so you can win a few buy-ins. Your goal should always just be to win money and improve your bank rule of what it is at the present time never dwell on the past and what it used to be before you had your 12 buy in downswing or or consider yourself being victimized by poker because it is a game of chance and we do need variance. I'm going to make a very like light thin value bet on this turn versus this guy because we know he's really stationary. I'm going to check Hollis River because I don't think he'll value bet light at all and I think that he'll bluff with loads of misdraws that he can have on that turn like gut shots you name it. King 10 is going to be an easy defend here don't have any equity on this flop. I'm not really thrilled about playing back at this guy. I mean, we've got a kind of crazy image here. We don't really rep much by raising. We could float. Don't know how often he's betting the turn, though, so I'm probably just going to fold to a C-bet. When he checks, I feel like he's just... He's probably going to be check-calling for the most part with Pierce, but we actually have, like, two over cards and a bunch of turn cards that we can barrel that give us equity, and there is a chance that he can be check-folding here. So I definitely want to bet because I get to find out what he's doing this with on the flop, whether he's a check calling type or whether he's a check folding type when he checks blind versus blind there. So that's good to know that he's just check folded that board. Okay. I'm not going to raise this flop because I think it looks so full of shit that it has to be a hand almost. Because if he's got half a brain, I just don't think I'd ever bluff raise this flop if he see bets here. So and also it's just so dry that I just want to be want to be uh, calling and letting him barrel off and stuff like that. We've got position, that's fine. And when he check folds that board, it's obviously a bit gutting because we have a set. But it's another thing we need to know. He's just giving up too frequently. That's just like a great board to see bet for play for razor there. So we need to note that he's just going to give up on that board. It gives us a ton of action, of info. It means that we can just uh, flat pre-flop against him like so much lighter than we would originally because the times he check folds flops, we're just immediately profiting from that. So we can actually play a wider range in position against him pre-flop than we normally would. I folded a6 there just because this guy's 3-betting so much and it's just not a hand that plays that well. Although I certainly wouldn't hate an open. 
So yeah, when you're down swinging, you just need to focus on the present and just play as well as you can. Try not to be results oriented. That's why I'm trying to do this month, and it is hard, believe me. It's hard even for me, and I've got a good bit of experience in this game. I've been through down swings and stuff before, but every time you have a down swing, you know it feels bad and it is difficult. But just try and think. Yeah, this is the situation as it stands. I'm gonna play my e game. I'm gonna play my best poker. Um, he three bets me here. He makes it quite small. I'm gonna go ahead and four bet bluff here with the queen. The queen isn't the best blocker, but it does block ace, queen, and queens, which are probably hands he's gonna three bet five bet quite often with. Gonna make it twenty two. Also, he's just seen me four bet jacks, so he knows that I do four bet hands like jacks, tens, hands like that probably. So I don't think he's gonna ship over this light if he is bluffing. I think we do fold out his air like all the time, and that's what we're trying to do, obviously. And he is three bet and wide from that position, so I think it's absolutely fine. Um, we get three bet by this total fish. He's st I wish he was a bit deeper. That would make set mining good here, and then we get cold called by this guy. Like I almost want to set mine, but I just feel like this guy is also like sort of doing the same, I don't think he has like aces, ace king, queens and stuff like that because he's going to four bet them so I don't think this guy doesn't have enough behind for us to have implied odds versus him and this guy doesn't have a strong enough range for us to have implied odds versus him therefore I just elect to fold seven there but if this dude had more I'd definitely be happy set mining so how can we reduce tilt during downswings, just quickly before I end this video, let's have a quick think about that. Well, we can we can cut the number of tables we're playing to make sure that we're actually playing well. If you're like six tabling and you're getting overrun, it's just going to make tilt worse if you're in the middle of a downswing. It is not going to be fun at all. I almost want a three bet here because I don't feel like he's going to four bet me again so soon. Yeah, I'm going to. I don't feel like he's going to four bet me again this quickly, given how. He has just four bet me and I've just folded to it. I think he's just on a level where if that was a bluff before, he's just gonna keep folding. He's gonna fold this one. So that's just a case of like leveling a reg, um, predicting how he'll think and then just making a play that allows him us to fold out a lot of his range. It's pretty standard. This is annoying because he'll fold a lot here as well. Um I'm still gonna do it because it's just far better than flatting. But you I think he will fold a lot. But he might just be, a lot of regs will just be like, oh, I can't take any more of this. You know, I'm not taking it this time. That's like three times in a row. And actually do something about it. Although, yeah, I did expect him to fold there quite often. Which makes that a really good spot to actually level them with a three-bit bluff, the hand after. I think it is. So you want to reduce the amount of tables you're playing just to, to make sure you've got the time to think through things clearly and you're not letting tilted emotional thoughts shroud your judgment. That's what you don't want to be doing. Um with jack 10 there I want the call I don't want a 3 because he just doesn't fold so I can't do it for value I can't do it as a bluff I mean we're deep I'm out of position I probably could call but this guy squeezes so much he's been 3 betting so much that I just don't like it if I had a more passive big blind there to act after me I would be happy flatting so play less tables that's one thing um, another thing is just review your sessions think objectively and just think get people's help post in the forums how did I play this hand you know, another thing you can do is get coaching, obviously that helps too. Um, you've got someone to go over things with one on one. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you can always just post on the forums. Oh, I want to squeeze again here. Uh, queen 2, it's so funny, it's just so many good like 3 bet spots are just coming up like in a row basically. So I mean, I really do want to squeeze here. This guy folds quite a lot, this guy folds quite a lot. Although my 3 bet number is just going to be through the roof. Ah, it's close. I mean, I just don't know how they're going to interpret it or whether they're, they're just going to have had enough of me. The fold 6 is here. It's a terrible hand to ever want to defend with out of position. Here I'm going to call because we've got a fishy looking guy here. And I've not played with him before. I've played with most of the regs. And I can assume he's probably not a reg, although he could be. Um, and we've got better a better price here and there's like um, a guy that's already called basically which makes this guy more likely to flat and less likely to squeeze which is what we want so this guy opens blind versus blind and then checks this flop, check folds it we'll note that, always note when they check fold because it no lets you know what you want to do when they check flops to you as pre-flop pre razor excuse me okay 
So play less tables, go over your hands instructively and think about them objectively and analyse your play and make sure you're not dwelling on the results of your hands but you're dwelling on how well you played them and what you could do to improve. Again I want to call because we're a bit deep but this guy tacked in front of me makes it not so great and we don't have good implied odds versus this guy's range because it's so wide so even if we flop a set we're not going to get like too much value from him because his range will be so wide so folding the pocket bears in the blinds that's something I talked about last time I think it's quite important to do against late position openers unless you've got a reason not to so is there anything else you can do while down swinging take a little break I don't mean take a huge break because you're going to get worse at poker if you stop playing for a while if you take a month off when you come back you're going to have forgotten a lot of things you'll be out of the swing so I'm not saying do that but if you just feel like every session is not going your way and you're just feeling tilted take like a couple of days two or three days and just do something else clear your head have fun go see your friends wherever come back three days later and you'll be clearer minded and it'll also help your reset function in your mind which will reset your sort of progress and by that sorry I'm not articulating this very well what I mean by like your reset function is that if you're constantly losing buy-ins that's going to be in your head and you're going to be going into a session thinking yeah, I'm nine buy-ins down in the last three days and you don't want that but if you take a few days off you might find an easier time coming back to things and just being like yeah um, some stuff happened last week but now it's like refreshed and I am just going to play poker and you sort of start from square one again which is good because you're not thinking oh my god I've lost all this money and that's going to affect your play so take a break go over hands thoroughly get people's help and get support from your your peers your fellow poker players and your mentors on grinder school or whatever if you want to post in the video threads and also just play less tables and make sure you're just playing your best every session and you come out of it soon enough Again, great spot just to flat here if he's going to be check folding. Bet a bit less here when I don't have the hand. It's not going to matter. It's not really going to change his range much for continuing. Many check calls I'm going to give up here. You see me stab at a pot before. He's probably not going to be uh, giving up he's that easily on the turn. He's probably he's probably got ace x here, like a lot of the time. But I'm getting such good odds that you only need to have like sevens or something stupid like every so often for me to be able to call here. Although it will be ace x the vast majority of the time, but that's fine. It's still going to be a call because I'm getting that price and he only needs to be messing about like so rarely but don't get me wrong I understand them beat there like a lot but just not so much that I have to fold for those odds right guys I'm pretty much going to play this hand with the tens then I'm going to wrap up um, so watch the video and rewatch it and have a think about what I've said about like three betting ranges, four betting ranges and how to react to three bets. I think that's quite important. Um, and the stuff about what to do during down swings as well is certainly something you need to be thinking about. This guy's a queen like all the time. It sucks because he won't fold it on the river very often but he always has a queen when he checks back the turn. He's an idiot. Well he's not necessarily an idiot but it's just he's barreling that turn when he has air. So when he checks it back, it's just he has queen x or a weak ace all the time. So if I wanted to fold that, I could bet like two times pot on the river or something. Maybe that would work. It's probably my best line, but I don't know anything about him. I don't want to take high variance speedy plays like that until I've got an idea that he's at least solid enough to fold. And it wouldn't need to be 2x pot, but it'd need to be an over bet to get him off what we know his range to be. Don't know this guy, he's short, I'm not going to mess with him. Okay guys, any questions, comments on this session, on this video, please post them in the thread. I'll be more than happy to get back to you about it. Okay, peace.